today's video is going to cover intermittent fasting we're going to speak about those of you that are on intermittent fasting but are struggling to lose weight and i want to talk about how i implement it to actually see results first things first is intermittent fasting is not a diet all it is is the eating window so the most common one is the 16 hours and the 8 hours eating and all it is is all the food you would typically eat you'd fit in that 8 hours or shorter that is what it is so that is why it's not classed as a diet it's just a way you actually eat day to day Number one is an obvious yet goodie. It's the fact that a lot of you out there have the misconception that doing intermittent fasting means you can eat whatever you want and just lose fat because of all the hormone response it's gonna trigger, which is false, because you can't just eat any and everything and think that you're gonna see results. And number one feeds onto this one, which is number two, which is you are not in a calorie deficit to actually lose weight. That is the number one factor of everything. So whether you create that deficit from eating less calories in a day or burning off more calories from exercising or walking more in a day, whatever it is, you need to create that deficit. Now the tips I want to cover are the actual reasons why you probably shouldn't do intermittent fasting and why it potentially may not be for you. Then I'll talk about how and why I use intermittent fasting myself. One of the things definitely you should consider when starting intermittent fasting is whether you have a healthy relationship with food, you feel guilty when you eat certain things or you have a tendency to binge eat. I personally don't feel intermittent fasting would be for you purely because you end up saving all your 2,000 calories to be at once but because you were so hungry because you starved yourself for like most of the day you binge and end up eating maybe 2,500 to 3,000 because you felt that hungry because the hormone ghrelin which releases when you're hungry and you're stressed basically made you keep eating so even when you've reached that cap of being full your body just still has those hunger signals firing to the brain so you keep eating Intermittent fasting doesn't tell you to skip breakfast, it tells you to potentially move that eating window further on in the day. A lot of people take that to be, you don't eat breakfast, when that's not true. Breakfast doesn't have to be in the morning. Breakfast time is different to breakfast. Breakfast just means breaking your fast, which means literally the first meal you have in a day. That's it. You've been fasting all the night because you've been sleeping. You wake up whenever you eat the first meal. That is breakfast. So don't let the terminology confuse you too much. You should definitely still be eating all the calories you should be in a day. Don't skip breakfast and think, okay, I'm not going to eat breakfast. And that's just 500 calories I'm not going to eat in the day. That's not what you're doing. All you're doing is what you typically would have potentially had for breakfast at 9 o'clock. You may push that back, like in my case, to around 12 or 1 p.m. And that is when you'd have that meal. The next reason definitely you should factor in is how sustainable it will be for your lifestyle. For example, me personally, I only do intermittent fasting during the work. I would do intermittent fasting on those days because it's much easier for me to sustain and manage because when I'm at work, I kind of dictate what I'm going to eat because I know for the next eight hours or whatever what I'm going to be doing. Whereas, if you're someone that constantly you don't know when you're going to be stopping, you're not really going to have access to a microwave or an oven, then you have to start thinking about different foods you can eat cold. It becomes a lot more stressful. It kind of throws things off because the best thing for your body, to be honest, when it comes to eating food, is trying to get into a nice circadian rhythm, which means kind of get into a habit of when you're going to eat so your body kind of knows when to get hungry. If you constantly eat at different times every single day, your body doesn't really get into a routine, which can make it harder. So then you wait even longer and then by the time you actually do eat, the hunger signals are driving you nuts to the point you overeat what you should have. With intermittent fasting, at no point realistically should you be starving. A lot of people, when they do this, they literally end up starving themselves at a point trying to wait for their window to open. You shouldn't be that rigid. If you're getting to the point where you're actually starving in the morning, say you normally break your fast at 1pm, and by like 11, 12 o'clock, you are absolutely starving and drinking water doesn't help, coffee doesn't help, you should go eat. You shouldn't purposely starve yourself, causing more poor relationship with food and mental health issues because you need to get to this arbitrary time which you've set. That is a problem with intermittent fasting where some people take it a little bit too literal. When you can maintain and sustain it, it can work wonders and I'll tell you more about that later on. But if you're someone that's literally fighting yourself 
just to try and maintain this imminent fasting lifestyle, it's not for you and you shouldn't do it. Because there's times when I used to imminent fast, but for whatever reason on a particular day, it hits around 11.30 a.m. and I'm just dead hungry and drinking water hasn't helped, drinking tea hasn't helped. And I'm like, you know what, screw it. And I eat my first meal. And to be honest, nothing changes with the scale, if I'm being totally honest, if I do that occasionally. But some people will literally sit and starve themselves here in their stomach growl but refuse to eat because it hasn't reached whatever window they're meant to eat. That's no bueno, no bueno. So try not to be too, too strict when it comes down to imminent fasting. You wanna try and build a lifestyle you actually enjoy. If anything you're doing in regards to fitness becomes a chore and you don't like it, the chances are you are not going to stick with it. So even if you got down to whatever goal weight you wanted, you probably won't maintain it because you don't enjoy it. So which means after like four or five months, are you still gonna be doing it? Chances not. They've never actually really had like a proper study done on humans to prove it really helps that much. And even if it did, you do know it's gonna be minor in comparison to the actual fundamental things you need to do, which is eating better, making sure your calories, whatever it is, is the right amount, whether it's you wanna be in a deficit or you wanna do a lean bulk, make sure those calories are correct. Now the last thing I'm gonna tell you guys is why and when I do intermittent fasting. Well firstly, when I was a beginner, I truly believed that I could do intermittent fasting and gain muscle, eat whatever I want and still see results. And I somewhat did, but not because of intermittent fasting. It was, to be honest, it was because I was a new lifter. And I saw results training four days a week. I followed a fairly good routine that I found on bodybuilding.com at the time. And that is the main reason why I saw results. Jumping forward now, further to like now when I use intermittent fasting, I do it mainly literally just to try and refuse snacks and that's the main thing I try mentally try and eat less snacks because when you constrict your foods to an eating window eight hours or less you're not really as hungry as you typically would be if you spread them out so if I had breakfast at say nine o'clock before I learned to work I'd get hungry again probably around 11 I'd want to get something snacky like crisp or chocolate bars like most people do and then when it gets to like 1 p.m. I'd want to have a proper lunch whereas when I constrict those windows you just naturally don't feel the need to snack as much because all the calories you're eating are closer together so you feel more full. So it's almost like the placebo effect. So that is one of the reasons I personally use it. But on the weekend, I don't do any fasting because I'm a lot more erratic, the timing's a lot different. And in honesty, I do like later on in the evening, maybe watching a movie, having popcorn, which is gonna be outside of the 9.30 window. I'd probably have it around 11.30 from watching a movie. So it's one of those things where I like it during the work week to try and eliminate me having snacks there, but in reality, it's just stopping me having extra calories. It's not because it's imminent fasting, because all those snacky calories I would have had throughout the day, I'm kind of not having them now, which is causing me not to eat as much. It's not putting me into a surplus. And a lot of people that do imminent fasting find out when they try and eat within that window, they can't eat as much as they typically would anyway, which means that they're going to a deficit without even thinking about it. Because they've squeezed all the meals they typically would have in that window, they may cut down the portion size of some of their meals because they still feel full from the last meal because they're used to eating so far apart. So that is the main way. It's not because of any sort of special benefits for the most part. It's because it stops you from eating excess calories. Anyways, people, hopefully all of that was understandable. I purposely tried to eliminate any sort of jargon or scientific study type words that's gonna confuse you guys. Anyways, people, like, comment, subscribe. If you wanna get any help with fitness or anything like that, click the links down below. Fitness with TJ has a whole bunch of plans for home workouts and training in the gym. So stay tuned for those. Anyways, people, I'm gone. Stay getting gained.